Moving forward with our ball script, let us make our ball actually move. So here I'm going to create void move ball. And what we are going to do inside of this function is we are simply going to check if move left, then we are going to move our ball left. And here if move right, we are going to move the ball right. So what we are actually going to do is we are going to create a vector three temporary position, which is going to be equal to our transform that position. So this way we are getting the current position of our game object. And if we are moving left, we need to say temp.x minus equals. And here we need to say force x multiplied by time dot delta time. Now time dot delta time is a really small number that is, or this number represents the time between each frame. So if we have 60 frames per second, this time represents the time from one frame to another frame and it's used to well program situations like this to, to smoothen out actually well situations like this so transform that position is equal to temp and also here what we are going to do if we are moving right we are going to add to our temporary position so instead of subtracting force x minus or force x times that delta time we are going to add to it and in the update function so here in the update function, we are going to call our move ball function. And that's why I set this move left and move right to be serialized fields, because now if we go here and select the ball, we can choose well the starting movement for the ball. If we don't click left or le left or right, excuse me, here in the inspector panel, our ball is not going to move. If I click on move right, we see that the ball is beginning to move right but now our ball goes outside of our screen. So what we need to do is we need to take our well, ground right here that we have, copy and paste it two times, or we are just gonna copy it one time. And I'm going to name this one left wall. And I am going to rotate, rotate it, well, negative 90, and I'm going to place it right here. So I'm going to put it at the zero for the Y axis and I am going to place it here, but I'm going to resize its Y axis because we need to resize it like this, because now when we have rotated it, we need to resize its Y axis. So resize it like this and place it here near the camera. So this white line right here represents the camera line. So here we are going to place it. And this is going to be our left wall. And also I'm going to create that tag. So here I'm going to create left wall and you can assume that we also also are going to have a right wall. So for the right wall, I'm going to copy and paste the left one and I'm going to rename it to right. So right wall, I'm going to, well, rotate it now, but at positive 90. And I'm simply going to set its X to be positive and this is going to move it well on the right side. So here we have our left and right wall. And don't forget to tag it. So here we need to tag the left one with the left and the right one with the right. Now, in order to make our ball change the direction when it touches the right ball, so we can, excuse me, the right wall. So we need to go here and we need to check if our target dot tag is equal to right wall. So if we have touched the right wall, what we need to do is we need to say a move right now is equal to false because we were moving right. We touched the right wall. Now we are moving left and here move left is equal to true. And also if target dot tag is equal to left wall, what we can do is we can do the opposite. So move left. So now move left is equal to false and move right is now equal to true. And if we go back in our Unity editor and run the game now, again, I forgot to set the initial position or the initial movement of our ball. I'm going to move it on the right. Notice now when it touches the wall, it's going to change the direction. The same way if our ball touches now this side, it's going to change the direction. So as we see here. And well, this is practically for our ball movement. And now what we are going to program is when we hit our ball with our rocket, we are going to also destroy our rocket. So what we are going to do here or for that, we are going to get the name of our ball. 
because when we touch the ball or when we collide with it we can get the information we can also get the tag but we can also get the name in our case we have the largest ball name so if i go back here and i'm going to say string name is equal to target dot name and this is going to get us the name of our game object if we collide with the largest ball we are going to get the largest ball and here I'm going to, well, split this actually, and we can get this as an array. So if we get this as an array, I'm going to say target.name.split. What this is going to do, this split right here, if for example, I'm going to say string s is equal to largest ball. Now, when we use this split, it's going to take this string and split it but the parameter by which it's going to split it is a space. So the empty space is going to be parameter by which it's going to split. So when it splits the whole string, it's going to return an array of string, practically array of words. So each individual word is going to be a part of that array. So if we split it like this, it will remove the spaces between our words and it's going to return largest, and it's going to return a ball. So when we do this, this array name now is going to have two elements, largest and ball. And we can utilize that, we can say if our name and the element that's at one is equal to ball, here we can say also destroy game object in order to destroy our rocket. And we can test this out right away and I'm going to set the right side to be the initial movement for our ball. So now if I run it, notice now when I hit the ball with the rocket, the rocket will destroy itself. And in order to understand this, what we are going to do, and let me just go see what is happening here. So we have index out of range exception. So if we are, oh, okay, I know what we are doing right, uh, doing wrong, excuse me. So here what we need to do is we need to check if our name, so before this we are going to say if our name.length is greater than 1, now what we are going to do is we are going to call it because if we touch the ground, or excuse me, if we touch the top, that is right here, it only has one line because we are not checking uh, if we are colliding with the ball or something like that, we are simply getting the name of the target. So even if we touch our top game object, it's going to get its name. But now if the name dot length is greater than one, and we know that our balls have two words, so largest or medium or smallest and ball, that's two words, so the length will be two. And now if I run the game, we are not going to have this error. So let me just try it again. So now if I shoot, we see that we don't have that error. If I shoot the top again, which we saw that our well rocket went on top, we see that we don't have that error. And what I can do here is I can say for int i is equal to zero, as long as i is a less than name dot, so name dot length, we are going to increment i. And here I'm going to say debug, so debug.log and I'm going to say the array contains and I'm going to say plus and name and the element that's at index i so that we can see what I'm talking about. So notice now if I go back here and run the game. So now when I shoot the ball we are going to see what this array is containing. So the array contains a largest and ball and we also see that when we collide with the player because when we are shooting we are touching the player right away we can well correct that by going here in the player script and let's say we add 0.5 so 1.5 will be on the y-axis for the position of our rocket when we fire it so notice now when I shoot the rocket we are going to instantiate it so we see that we are instantiating it well above our player a little bit but anyway notice now if I touch the ball so when I shoot and it touches the ball we see that the array contains largest and ball so this is what I meant by splitting it and let's say 1.1 and this is what I meant when I said splitting it here using this split so it's going to return each word separated well with 
our space practically. So that's all for this tutorial or this video. In the next video, we are going to see how can we actually split our ball into two pieces when, well, our, how to say, our rocket touches it. So if you like what you see, comment, like, share, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.